Hello everyone, this is me Amir Ahmed Nasr and I am your host for the Future of Islam in the Age of New Media and today we have one of our 60 speakers uh, here to elaborate on the 60 second take because obviously 60 seconds is not enough <laughs> um, and his name is um, Zaki Hassan and Zaki Hassan is a professor of communication and media studies and he's also the founder of Zaki's Corner, that's Z-A-K-I-S Corner.com He's also a writer for the Huffington Post and the co-author of the book called Geek Wisdom. Zaki, thank you so much for doing this and welcome. Thanks for having me. Great. So, um, you know, let's just dive in um, right into things. We did a little bit of preparation before this and, and, and talked about a bunch of stuff casually. Um, so in your, your 60 second take, you know, you, you talked about how the internet allows us to work through most of our differences. And um, to not label each other in a way that, you know, makes negative associations those, with those labels and in a way that enables us to dismiss each other. It's like, oh, he's this, whatever, or she's that. Um, and you've, t you've talked about how you've written some articles on Muslim-related issues that found common ground with people across the religious spectrum and the political spectrum. Now, people across the religious spectrum, I can see how that works. But people across the political spectrum, um, does that even include, you know, the right wing and, you know, very progressive liberals also on, on, on the left side of the spectrum? And so, you know, how, how does that work? And, and I'd love it if you just shared a few examples about certain key things that resonated with people regardless of their political affiliations. Well, uh, it's it's interesting because I can I can approach this uh, subject from from both ends because I've uh, maintained friendships with people who are very far apart from me politically, and they have been very fruitful, very long lived friendships, uh, mainly through the online uh, uh, spectrum. I mean, people who I haven't actually even met online, uh, other than online, uh, I've maintained very long uh, uh, friendships with, and then. Vice versa, I've actually just recently uh, seen somebody defriend me on Facebook hmm. because because of you know I guess they just had enough. So it's I can actually approach this from both ends. But uh, I think in terms of bridging divides, what what an online uh, venue allows to happen is that it it takes away that element of of immediacy, which which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Right. You know, because uh, it allows for a heated conversation to cool down. Yeah. Uh, because because oftentimes, if you're communicating through message boards or through Facebook or whatever, I mean, it's not occurring in real time. And just by virtue of getting 10 minutes to pull your thoughts together, that's the 10 minutes you need not to say something you'll regret or to phrase something uh, in a way that, that's more open-minded. Right, and, and it allows you to see into the person's own personal issues for why maybe they're angry about a certain thing and, and you begin to understand their motivations and, you know, developing a sense of empathy that allows you to respond properly. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Uh, and, and I think uh, th that's a great plus. I mean, I mean the, the Internet is a door that swings both ways and, and mm -hmm. we're all intimately aware of how hateful people can be on the internet. I mean, you just need to look at the comment section under any news story at all mm -hmm. and just see how fast it takes to descend. You know, Godwin's law kicks in pretty fast, right? But by the time Hitler gets mentioned, you're like, oh, okay, well, this is over, right? Uh, so, so we know that we know that's the negative side of the internet, but I'm somebody who uh, has experienced firsthand the genuine positive side of well let's have a conversation let's talk this out in a way we would not be able to in person so so there there are definitely uh, pluses and minuses on both sides so for someone like you you know I mean people like us who want to utilize the internet you know for 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 positive um, things how do you find common ground like as a Muslim living in America how would you engage someone um, who has very negative views of Islam, and and but who's also curious, not not just going around and trawling around? How would you try right. to find some common ground? What what would it be based on, and um, you know how would you go about doing that? Well, yeah, and I think the the distinction you made between somebody who's curious and trolling is a very very important one because oh, I yeah. mean there's plenty of trolls out there, right? Mm -hmm. And and p part of this dialogue is knowing 
when to hold them and when to fold them. Right. Because, I mean, there's going to be people who have their minds made up. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, at some point you just have to walk away. Uh, as for people who are curious, you know, I, I always say that the best thing we can do is to just be us. You know, I mean, our, our identity as Muslims is obviously a crucial factor, but it is not the be-all, end-all that defines every aspect of, of our uh, public self. In the sense that, you know, there's other things about me that make me who I am, right? So, so right. I think I think the best thing we can do is to just be, be, be human. That's it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, I mean, we we like watching movies. We like hanging out with our friends. You know, we like playing with our kids. I mean, at the end of the day, w once we start breaking down the the walls of Prejudgments and and presuppositions. That's we're 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 halfway there. We're more than halfway there. Right. No. 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 Absolutely right. And and I've seen it happen many times on on Twitter. Even though in on Twitter, you know, there is that immediacy that you know yeah. you were talking about earlier. Because on Twitter, things can get pretty ugly and nasty very fast. Yeah. It's all real yeah. time, and you're responding back and forth. Um, but but I, I've seen conversations on Twitter start, you know, like you know, in a very heated way. What, what, whether they're about, you know, political issues or, you know, like, you know, Muslims are involved with, like, Republicans um, on Twitter. And then all of a sudden, when s someone in that conversation, usually it's, it's a group conversation, like a group of five or six people, when someone mentions something about the NFL or the NBA, it's, it's so interesting how things shift. The, the whole yeah. energy of the conversation shifts. And people, you know, start exchanging tweets and smiley faces like, oh, yeah, that game was really cool. Oh, that team lost. Oh, my goodness. Yes. And they just keep commenting about it. And it becomes a lot more human. So it's not about labels. Oh, he's Muslim. He's Republican. He's this. He's that. It's just like, hey, man, let's just talk about fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly it. Right. right. It's, it, once, once we start finding those commonalities, we, we, those differences still exist. But suddenly we contextualize them in terms of the big picture. That's, that difference is just one aspect among these other areas where we agree. Right. You know, yeah. So, okay. Because here, and, and I'm, I'm reading the, the rough um, transcript of what you said. Um, so, you know, you're saying here, for the, for the Muslim community especially, I think it's an invaluable tool that can help us engage with different points of view that, um, than our own, and also allow us to ponder different ideas, ask different questions, and even offer different solutions. This is why it's so important that we continue to engage and become better versed in the many benefits of new media technologies. Um, so what would, this, what would these different points of view than our own be um, that you think more Muslims need to engage with? Because there are many points of uh, view out there. Are there any specific ones that you think are important and more Muslims need to explore and look at? Um, you know, and like, are there any specific ideas that Muslims need to, to ponder and think differently about it? And also, you also mentioned, you know, questions. W what questions should we be asking? Because we, we can go all over the map with this, and obviously it will depend on your personal questions, what drives you, what motivates you when you're using social media. Um, but are there any specific things? For instance, maybe you guys don't have this so much um, going on in the United States, you know, the whole issue of Islam and democracy. Because, you know, um, like, it, I mean, it's clear to me that, that American Muslims are very comfortable with democracy. They're, they're happy uh, with the whole notion. But that's not necessarily true in, in other parts of, of the Muslim world, other Muslim communities. So I guess, depending on the community in, the questions will vary. Um, from your experience within your community, what do you think are the specific questions, the really important ones that more Muslims need to maybe be asking and engaging with? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's such a wide spectrum of opinions and questions and concerns and everything else. And it definitely, uh, what I feel like we get through the Internet, potentially, I mean, we, what we have the opportunity with is a way of addressing things that a lot of people are wondering about but don't really have a way of expressing or, or you know, finding uh, people who have the same questions and whatnot, and I mean, if if we're getting to specifics, I mean, gosh, you name it. You know, uh, the the role of Muslims in in public life, in government. I mean, yes, people are comfortable with uh, notions of democracy here, but there's still always there's there's omnipresent questions about well, 
uh, what, how, how involved should we be in government, etc. You know, what is the role of women in public life, etc. I mean, these these are uh, these are evergreen questions that I think yes, there are uh, answers to be found, and and you know whether they are right answers or wrong answers is obviously dependent on who we consider authorities. But it's worth having that conversation. You know, and I think I think far too often uh, we tend to brush controversial things under the rug. And we forget that there is a multiplicity of identities and yeah. and points of view within our community, and it's worth acknowledging that. It's worth being proud of that. You quickly mentioned the issue of authority, right? It's like how, how do we sort of determine if you know the right and um, and wrong answers, and you know we have to defer to authority. And if there is anything that came out of this project that was like super intriguing for me, I mean, obviously many things were, but the number one most intriguing thing was this whole notion of authority. And many speakers mm -hmm. addressed it in, in different ways, you know, during the, the future of Islam in the age of new media, the audio seminar. I'd love to get your take because, see, here's what I personally struggle with, right? And, and let's just bounce some ideas back and forth. Obviously, authority is important. Like you, you, you need to have a way of getting, getting authoritative answers. The way that I see it is that, you know, in this time of, of globalization and, you know, um, more people using social media, we've seen new voices pop up. And um, this whole notion of authority is starting to sort of wither away. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's it's more it's getting more and more difficult to to draw the lines and to figure and to figure out even what, what standards and and criteria do we use to say yes so and so is indeed authoritative. Um, it's a whole different um, environment right now, and obviously, and I'm pretty sure you agree, you would agree. I think that has many benefits. In fact, I think um, the benefits outweigh um, the negative aspects, but perhaps if you are not used to that kind of environment or if you don't have a solid grounding in, in the tradition and in the tools, then for a lot of people it can become challenging. Well, who's right? Um, who's wrong? You know, who am I supposed to listen to? Um, you know, so obviously we don't want to devolve into this post-modernist kind of um, environment where truth with a capital T no longer exists and everything right. is just a perspective and all perspectives are more or less kind of equal. Um, you know, generally right. speaking, you know, we need to have some solid objective grounding. It's a big question. I know um, it's 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 more philosophical. What's your take? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's an extremely uh, wide ranging question. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, my my feeling is that uh, we can have conversations about our role as Muslims, but when we start getting into issues of, well, what does being a Muslim entail in X scenario or Y scenario, I mean, at some point, uh, we have to, you know, I, I, as I'm a teacher, and one thing I always uh, uh, tell myself is that when I don't know the answer, I have to be able to say, I don't know, but I'll find out. And I think we as Muslims just in general need to be willing to do that, is know when, is know when we don't know. Uh, and not start making suppositions based on, well, I think this is true in this case, so by extrapolation we can assume that this might be true in this case, because that's how, uh, that's how things very quickly go south. Uh, so, I mean, for, from my end of things, I mean, I have certain people I consider authoritative in my life, and I trust their opinions on things, and I'm, I'm very happy to defer to their judgment. Uh, and I think I think people need to do that more because I mean when we're talking about our religious identities I mean that's that's serious stuff that's no joke mm -hmm. so so you know there there is that cultural part of being a Muslim but that that spiritual side is a little bit more serious and so I think we owe it to ourselves to find people we do consider authoritative so on the issue of religious identity <clears throat> I mean, you just said it, I mean it, it is serious stuff and also going back to what you mentioned earlier about labels and how labels can sort of put people in a box and to an extent, you know, like dehumanize them. I mean, not, not in that really aggressive uh, malicious sense, but, yeah. um, you know, we just see them through this narrow sort of specific prism and it's, it's a very limited view. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, you know, we have to use labels. I mean, 
you know, there are Sunnis, there are Shiites, there are Sufis, and there are Sufis from different orders, and, you know, there are Salafis, which is a label that these days has become very politicized and, you know, very convenient to throw at someone who's like, ah, is this the Salafi, let him keep quiet. Wahhabi, same thing. Um, and there are many people who, who wear these, these, these labels um, proudly, and others sort of like, oh, no, I'm a progressive Muslim, I'm a liberal Muslim. And... Um, you know, all these labels can never fully capture the, the, the accuracy um, of, of things. But, you know, we, we have to use them. So how would you go about tr trying to balance the need for not just, like, um, the need to use labels, but al also w w with the importance of being cautious, not to just right. put people in a box? Well... You know, when we talk about using labels, one thing I always say is that we have to use labels for uh, classification, not for qualification. That's that's a very and, yeah. That, that that's that's a really good way of putting it. Classification, yeah, I, I, not qualification. Go on. Yeah, I, I mean, ultimately, what 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 is the purpose of labels? It's so that we understand somebody, not so that we are judging somebody. I mean, it's it's if somebody is a vegetarian. Mm. Well, that's something that's helpful to know because in our interactions, I'm not going to be like, hey, you want this burger, right? Because I know, oh, this person is a vegetarian, right? So, so that's what I mean. I mean, we, we know things about people so that it helps us understand them, not so that we start making judgment calls about their worth as people. Uh, and, and when we start getting into the labeling business as, as Muslims, which of course happens all the time, uh, being Muslim, you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that that's something we have to be very careful about because, yes, we label ourselves. That means we're holding ourselves to that standard. That does not mean that we're holding other people to the standard we've set for ourselves. Uh, and, you know, so ultimately it's just, it's, we have to ask ourselves why it is that we are thinking of people in terms of however we think of them. Right. Interesting. Well, cool. By the way, I realized that we jumped into things too fast. And I never got the chance to ask you to tell us about yourself, how you became a media professor, just a little bit about your background, um, how you moved to America. You know, you mentioned um, earlier before the interview when we were preparing that you, you had lived in Saudi Arabia about 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, you've, also, you've obviously been in different communities and different environments, which I think has given you the ability to see things outside the box. And, um, you know, hence probably your interest in things like media, communications, um, yeah, that's how we all tend to get into these fields. So just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, and yeah. Uh, well, I was born in Chicago, and uh, when I was three, I moved to Saudi Arabia with my family. So I spent uh, about 10 years there, uh, uh, and I moved back to Chicago in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, that really, at the time, it was extremely difficult to make that jump from culture to culture but in in the interim I've come to realize what a tremendous gift that gave me because it, it made me uh, one of my students told me this it made me a tricultural kid because by virtue of being raised in different cultures it's given me a new third culture right uh, which is I guess where I am now so uh, that's that's great and um, I've, I've always been a you know, I've always been a film buff. I've always been a fan of of different aspects of media. So just books and television, you name it, and the impact that they have in in making people think and perceive other people. Uh, so that's something that I've always really made made an active effort to pursue. I was actually very lucky. I got to do my master's thesis at uh, San Jose State uh, on the television show Lost. Mm -hmm and how its portrayal of an Iraqi character right. <laughs> uh, really uh, reflected changing trends at post 9-11, you know, and that's uh, something I'm quite proud of. Uh, in terms of being a media professor, I mean, my, my, uh, my master's was in communication studies, my undergrad was in film and video production, yes. so by virtue of that I was able to parlay that into teaching in both uh, avenues. and, and uh, my website, which I've had for uh, since 2004, so about uh, about eight years now, uh, that that's something that to me reflects the many sort of aspects of my life. And we, you know, we were talking earlier in our conversation about uh, representing 
the different sides of our identity and that's kind of how I look at my website which is I talk about movies I talk about politics I talk about Muslim related issues and to me it's one hand washes the other washes the other because hmm. people who come in based on this will then jump on and be interested in this and and that's something that I've experienced um, so that's kind of what's brought me to where I am right now uh, what are your plans moving forward? Um, do you have any specific plans that have to deal with social media and religious issues? Um, certain projects that, that help the Muslim community? Well, you know, I, my, my goal has always been to sort of take, take the identity politics out of Muslim identity and just have our contribution be as another voice in in this wide spectrum of voices that we have in in, in America, uh, so all the work that I do is coming from that perspective. Where uh, I'm I'm not a Muslim writer. I'm a writer who happens to be Muslim, and you know that's a that's a semantic difference, but I think it's an important one. No, I think it's a huge difference. Well, hey Zaki, thank you very much. Is there anything you just want to say quickly to the audience? Any specific point that you think is really important that you want to mention? Well, I, first of all, I just want to say thanks for, for reaching out and including me in this. And, uh, you know, I think, I think, as I said before in the, in the shorter uh, uh, stretch, new media really, I view it as the wave of the future. So it's something that I want to emphasize. We really need to know it and master it. Cool. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, nice. thank you very much. And um, this was great. No, this was really useful. It was good get, getting to, to know you better and um, to have your um, insights because I think they're really relevant and really useful. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. All right.